Yo guys, it's AU5. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a polyphonic resonator and modal filter with Serum FX. Serum has been around for nine years and so has its audio effect version, Serum FX, and it never ceases to inspire me for new sound design ideas. And this is a new thing that I recently discovered which is super cool and really powerful that I'm excited to show and share with you. So I have three uh, audio clips here in this track drum loop, this laser jam, and some growls. So Serum FX, when you first open it, it is going to be on the effects panel, and that's so you, know, you can use the typical effects that you have in Serum to affect your audio. But that's not actually what we're going to be using. We're going to go into the oscillator tab, and if you enable the noise oscillator, you'll see that it says audio in. Now that's actually a feature that I requested a while ago, so thanks Steve if you're watching this. And what this allows you to do is route audio into it and utilize the front panel filter here. So by default, if you enable both of those, nothing is going to happen. That's because either you need to have note latch enabled or you have to have MIDI being sent through it. So this is where it's really powerful. I have chords here and it's just MIDI, there's no synth on here. I'm going to just set, send the MIDI to the track with Serum FX on it, and uh, then if I play something, it will play through. Uh, it's gonna be really loud because I have multiple voices going on, so I'm gonna reduce the level of the, uh, the audio in and the noise oscillator. So right now, it's just functioning just like a typical low pass, but if I enable key track on the filter, now each note of this chord this MIDI, is going to be playing a different cutoff frequency of the filter. You can't really hear it until I start to increase the resonance. So if I set this to a flanger filter like flange plus for instance and turn up the resonance, plays chords through it. Now, I can use the cutoff to actually tune this. And if I want it to match the actual notes that I'm playing in my MIDI, I'm going to have to tune it to 233 hertz. And that is basically spot on the correct tuning. So. And it's important to note that this only plays when MIDI is being sent to it. So once the MIDI stops playing, it cuts off. You can also increase the release time to uh, get some release though, like so. Uh, so that's really cool, it's really powerful, especially when you're using other types of filters such as the, the Flanger high-low filters. Uh, that is basically a comb filter with a high pass and a low pass filter that is in the feedback loop so you can get more dampened uh, string like effects if you increase the resonance and also increase the high low width knob right here. You can also try the flanger phaser filters which include a phaser in the feedback loop and because of the phase shift that it introduces it uh, basically will create some inharmonicity in the harmonics. So it's kind of out of tune so I'm going to just use a macro to be able to tune the cutoff. It doesn't stop there, so that's just the tip of the iceberg. I want to talk about modal filtering. A modal filter is basically a bunch of bandpass filters in parallel. So if we set this to band 12 or band 24, these are bandpass filters, and if I play these, uh, play the MIDI through, So this is technically a modal filter. Now, it's very narrow because this chord is just playing a very small portion, 
very narrow portion of the spectrum. So to fully take advantage of this, I'm going to add a chord MIDI effect. I'm gonna bring this down three octaves, two octaves, one octave, up one octave, two octaves, three octaves. So now we have a total of what is spanning seven octaves. And if we play a chord through it, well, it's not gonna be able to play all the notes until we increase our polyphony up to 32. And that's what's really cool about Serum Effects is that you still have this huge amount of polyphony. So this is basically 32 parallel filters that are filtering the audio simultaneously. It might get a little heavy on your CPU, but uh, check this out. I'm gonna turn the level down because the more voices that we have, the increase in volume that we're gonna get. Actually, I'm gonna go into the effects tab just for the compressor. If I turn the threshold down to zero and the ratio up to limit, then it won't go over zero and it'll be a safety limiter. So that's really sick. Now, there's a bunch of low notes that are playing, so I'm going to use just a pitch MIDI effect and bring this up maybe a couple octaves. Maybe down one. And look at that. We have a spectrum pretty full from 145 hertz all the way up to like 13 kilohertz. Listen to that. This is playing stacked octaves which is a really clean, pure sound. And if you're familiar with pitch map, it also tends to have a similar sound as that. So right now it's kind of static and kind of lifeless and we can really spice this up by modulating our filter stereo pan. And this creates some detuning offset in the left and right channel. If I use an LFO one to modulate the pan position, I'm gonna slow this down to one hertz. I'm also going to set this to a sine wave. And I'm going to constrain the modulation amount to, let's say around, I don't know, 12, 18. We can start to get this chorusy effect. Now, if we wanted to really get some randomness, we go into the matrix and assign uh, a note on random modulator to LFO one's rate and just have it be tweaked slightly. And uh, as long as we have anchor disabled, the trigger mode is off and our rate is uh, free running and not on BPM mode. We can get some really natural drift going on. That sounds crazy, but it's not very musical. So what we could do is use our aux source to uh, and set that to note number to modulate the amount of the modulation. Oh, actually, I'm going to make sure that this is on the filter stereo channel. So I'm gonna set this to note number. And what this is going to do is it's going to use this transfer curve here. The low notes are going to affect the detuning less than the higher notes. And this is just gonna give it a more musical sound. As you can see, the higher harmonics are more detuned than the lower ones. And I can use the output control to kind of confine that and constrain that. I could also use this aux source modulation curve to uh, accentuate that high frequency bias. Like so. Really cool. So it doesn't stop there. You notice how the high frequencies are still really ringy? If we want to kind of create a high frequency dampening effect, we can also use the note modulator, modulate the resonance of it and uh, bring it a little bit in the opposite direction. So let's do minus 10. And if we increase, change this curve here, there's more resonance in the lower notes and it almost gives the effect of a high dampening. We could also use the output here to, uh, to adjust the amount of dampening. So right there, there's no high dampening as, as we start to increase this. Mm -hmm. 
we get more high high frequency dampening and it kind of gives it this uh, more natural kind of wooden sound in my opinion so another thing that we could do instead of using the f modulating the filter stereo uh, going to just reset that so instead of using the macro to change the filter cutoff let's use the note number modulator to change the filter cutoff and see what kind of cool effects we can do with this so if we set this to bipolar mode you get an effect that's very similar to like the uh, the centroid dissonant effect in Razor if you're familiar with that So that's really fun and uh, creative. So there's a couple other things that we could do. Uh, we are not limited to just chords being sent to Serum FX. I can use an arpeggiator and let's do some, let's set it to random other. Let's make it really fast. We can get this kind of almost like the uh, granular effect in Ableton's spectral resonator. If I increase the release time, we can uh, basically change the decay of the grains. Or I can use something like a uh, down style. All it's doing is just sending notes very rapidly into Serum FX and it's creating this filter sweep movement. I can do converge and diverge. I could change the release envelope curve. I could also experiment with different filters, such as the band reject filter. And at lower resonances, you can really get some uh, complex phaser-like effects. And last but not least, if we go into the global, we can also use tuning files, which I think is really cool because, well, this is where microtonality comes in and there's a lot of flexibility that you can uh, take advantage of with the tuning files. So for instance, we can use like Carlos Harmonic C tuning. And this is only going to work though if we are tuned to C. So um, I'm just gonna set this growl to C. Actually, no, I'm going to keep the growl in D. I don't even have to change the key of anything. I'm just going to change the MIDI to, uh, let's do a C major 7. So the harmonic tuning uses the harmonic series, and a C major 7 are notes that are very close uh, to the harmonic series anyway. So um, then what I could do is use a macro to tr transpose the cutoff to back to D, um, or whatever key that we need it to be. So as long as our MIDI is in C and our tuning file is in C, then it will uh, be in it will be tonic to the tuning file. So let's hear how this sounds. Wow, listen how pure that is, because that is resonating the harmonic series notes, the harmonically tuned notes. So if we go back to uh, 12 tone equal temperament, which is what it by default is. Listen to the difference. Let me, let me really ring out these. Yeah. 
harmonics for you to hear. Ooh, that sounds kind of harsh, but if we, because there's a sharp four in there with that F sharp, but if we use harmonic, harmonic tuning. Listen to that. Wow, that's so cool. That's just a totally, totally new kind of sound that I've not heard before. So yeah, that is how you can use serum effects as a polyphonic resonator and modal filter. If you guys like tutorials like this, be sure to subscribe and like this video and leave a comment and all that. But most importantly, if you are trying to up your sound design game hardcore, and if you are interested in learning Serum, I have a Serum Masterclass that I did with Doll Nation. I teach you how to use Serum and what every single parameter does from the ground up so you can make insane sounds and do insane processing just like I'm doing. I also have a section that goes over all different types of unique sound design techniques that I discovered myself using Serum and Serum Effects. So if you're interested in the Serum Masterclass, check it out, link in the description. That being said, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.